Hi, this is Nate Ulrich, Browns beat writer for the Akron Beacon Journal with Steve Dorschick, Browns beat writer for the Can Repository here outside Browns headquarters in Berea. Steve, we're looking ahead to Sunday's game at Heinz Field. Browns versus Steelers, some unfinished business. These two teams tied, obviously, 21-21 in week one. Baker Mayfield, though, was not the starting quarterback of the Browns in that game, and here he is getting ready to go against Ben Roethlisberger for the first time. How do you size up that matchup? I kind of look at it uh, globally in terms of uh, Mayfield versus the quarterbacks in the AFC North, uh, Nate. From the standpoint, it's fascinating. Uh, the Bengals have had uh, Dalton for a pretty long time. The Ravens uh, have had Joe Flacco for an even longer time, and the Steelers have had Ben Roethlisberger forever. And here comes Mayfield wanting to be a long timer, and he better be as a number one overall pick, putting his talents only four starts into his NFL career against uh, one of those guys. Yeah, and the interesting thing about this matchup is Mayfield's going to be going into Heinz Field for the first time. Um, Todd Haley today was asked if Mayfield's going to be ready for it, and he said he better be. Uh, he has no choice. Speaking of Todd Haley and uh, the Browns, Hugh Jackson obviously made headlines. Um, Sunday after the game in Tampa, I was there, 26-23 overtime loss, and Hugh Jackson came out and said, hey, I'm going to dive into the offense because we got to get off to faster starts. They've only scored six points in the first quarter as an offense, eight points as a team. Two of those points were the safety. Uh, two of those points came from the safety against the Bucks, And then the overtime, four overtimes now, a whopping four overtimes for the Browns and only three points. How do you look at the offense? How do you look at Hughes' comments? In terms of uh, the offense, obviously it's been inferior, uh, even in the most recent win against the Ravens. That was a nine-point uh, game in, in overtime. That's not much offense. And Baker Mayfield, to me, has taken a disappointing turn even more drastically into some of the uh, pitfalls that you would expect of a rookie quarterback. I think uh, this whole offense has to uh, look at Baker Mayfield now and, and hope that he can somehow find the wherewithal uh, that it will take for him to lead this offense as, as a number one overall pick should, even as a rookie, somewhere uh, important. In terms of you versus Haley, that's uh, going to be an ongoing soap opera up here, I believe. Uh, you know, uh, how serious it is, uh, we can speculate, and there's a potential there for these two guys who didn't know each other well until now uh, uh, falling into this situation where they weren't getting along well and some acrimony will develop. But I think the, the other side is uh, possible too, Nate. I, I think it's possible that, still possible, uh, and this is what you is hoping for, of course, that they can smooth things over because that's uh, going to be used salvation in this building. Right, and as we talk about Hugh and what he hopes is his salvation. Um, we've got to say that Hugh is obviously on the hot seat. The furnace seems to be on full blast now after uh, two consecutive losses. And, you know, the Browns have this game against the Steelers, and then they play the Chiefs, who are really, really good, and then they play the Falcons. And the Chiefs and Falcons are at home, but not going to be easy matchups for the Browns. So there's the potential, and you can see it happening. It's a slippery slope here that the Browns are flirting with to a five-game losing streak heading into the bye, and change could be coming at that bye if the Browns reach that point. Um, Steve, how do you look at Hugh Jackson? Do you think he's hanging on to his job by a thread at this point? I see Hugh Jackson not necessarily going through a roller coaster of emotions, but it's kind of a straight, predictable line from uh, from crisis mode on game day. And Nate, you were down there in Tampa Bay, and uh, uh, you sounded a little bit rough coming off of that game. To the next day, you was animated, not quite natural, but uh, he had recovered a little bit. And by now, the middle of the week, he's recovered and he's uh, presenting himself, in my view, in an even keel way. But none of that's going to matter. The roller coaster, the straight line of, uh, of drama isn't going to matter unless he starts beating. I, I think this uh, this Pittsburgh game uh, is probably the one that he needs to win to save his job. Yeah, I think this is the turning point game in many ways, including for Hughes' tenure as Brown's coach. Steve, I wrote after the game Sunday that I thought that Hugh was clearly feeling the pressure and the panic was 
uh, the way he came across in, in those post-game comments uh, that he made about the offense and, uh, as it related to Todd Haley. Um, I just think that he's feeling the heat, and I think that you know this is a huge game. The Browns have not won in Pittsburgh since 2003. They've lost 14 consecutive games in Pittsburgh. They've lost 24 consecutive games on the road. With that, and you've said before, controversy, dysfunction are usually not good karma for a football team. Do you have a prediction for Sunday? Gene, you threw me off there. I'm thinking back. 2003, I was there. Tim Couch looked very good that day. I did not feel very good about the Browns' chances on, on this day. Uh, I just don't see a plausible way that they can get where they need to be. So I'm picking the Steelers by about 10 points. I'm also picking the Steelers. I haven't settled on my final score, but we'll talk to you next time. Thanks for watching.